Welcome back to day two of the Middle East. Today we will deep dive into the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Please note that I understand this is a sensitive subject and I will not be taking a side. What I do hope to accomplish is to give you the facts as I know them, as unbiased as humanly possible. So it is a conflict over land, religion, human rights, self-governance, and most of all, dignity each side wanting all of these things and more. It is easy for Americans to say two-state solution, but if it was that easy, it would have been solved in 1948 and the counselors' lives would have been saved. It is not easy. This map shows us the area known as Israel slash Palestine and the changing borders from 1945 till now. The inset map shows where it is located on the map of the world. It is an extremely small parcel of land, but extremely important to all three monotheistic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. So let's go over some background. In ancient times, the land was indeed the land of the Hebrews. As different empires came to rule these lands, the Jews were either a religious minority or exiled from the land. During the Middle Ages, Christians and Muslims fought over control of the Holy Land, particularly Jerusalem. Meanwhile, Jewish people had scattered to Europe, Africa, Asia, and even India. They found themselves as a religious minority, and they were often persecuted for it. In the 20th century, two things would set the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in motion. They were the end of World War I and Zionism. We'll start with Zionism. Zionism is a movement to establish a nation state for Jewish people. Started in the 1890s by Theodore Herzl, the idea was that as a people, the Jews had long suffered in the various communities they lived in. They wanted a place to be safe and self-governing. Herzl didn't necessarily specify where the place would be, although Jerusalem was the great hope. During World War I, the British and the French incurred Arab encouraged Arabs to rise up against their Ottoman overlords, including those living in Palestine. In 1917, Lord Balfour of, of Britain suggested that Jews establish a homeland in Palestine. This is known as the Balfour Declaration. This encouraged many Jews to migrate there. When the Ottomans were defeated, Britain established themselves as the colonial power by the British mandate in Palestine. Thus, in the 1920s and the 1930s, many Jews migrated to Palestine. During World War II, Hitler encouraged Arabs to rise up against Great Britain and France in the Middle East. This included Palestinian Arabs. At the end of World War II, the population of Palestine was two-thirds Arab and the Arabs owned 80% of the land. As the world was now sympathetic to the Zionist cause, in major part due to the devastation of the Holocaust, Israel looked like it would become a reality. However, when the British ended their mandate, of Palestine, they gave this problem to the United Nations. The United Nations recommended a two-state solution, an Arab state, a Jewish state, and an international zone around Jerusalem. The Jews accepted the deal, the Arabs did not. They believed on getting 15% of the land when they own 80% was unfair. So in 1948, the Arab League met and unanimously rejected the deal. The Arab armies attacked the Israeli and the Israelis fought back. The loss was triumphant for the Israelis and devastating for the Palestinians. It left one million Palestinians homeless. They flooded into neighboring Arab countries like Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Egypt. And although they took their Arab brothers and sisters in, they did not fully integrate them into their societies. In most cases, they were set up in refugee camps. Most of the leaders of the Arab countries that fought against Israel in 1948 were assassinated or overthrown. In 1952, Gamal Abdul Nasser comes to power in Egypt. He was extremely popular throughout the Arab world, so much so that Israelis feared him. They believed he could unite the Arab world against them. In 1956, they attack and rout the Egyptian army. The Israelis occupy the Sinai Peninsula and Nasser becomes even more popular. In 
Again, in 1967, the Israelis attack Egypt, and in six hours, they occupy the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, or the Palestinian territories, and start a 20-year occupation. The Palestinians decide they can no longer rely on other Arabs to fight for them, so they organize themselves under an umbrella group called the Palestinian Liberation Organization, or PLO. Yasser Arafat, who was the head of Fatah, which was the largest of these groups, became the head of the PLO. Arafat was an extremely controversial figure, a freedom fighter to Palestinians, a terrorist to Israelis. Next, you will watch scenes five and six from the road to 9-11. The first discusses the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the second discusses Nasser. <laughs> 